Hi everybody, Captain Bill Safe the Third in the back deck of the Rod and Reel Junior working a deep water pattern off what we call in the safe fleet the northwest corner. The very tip of the Calf Island Shoal structure that runs northeast and southwest here in the eastern basin of Lake Ontario is a known hot spot for both lake trout and king salmon during the hot zone and the staging period. Coming in all the way from uh, Manaqua, Wisconsin is our new friend, Todd Berg. Following us on the YouTube channel, you got a good one on here, don't you, buddy? We do, three. we got a good fish on. Yep, we came a thousand miles from Lake Superior to fish with you, with the king, <laughs> with the king. With the well, king. well, this is good. He's on. We took, uh, your partner John hit a, hit a under 25 here on the same rig. Mm -hmm. This particular one is a Northern King set of bells. It's what we refer to as laser green. And uh, we've got a two-tone Yakima spinner combination on this that we'll show as it gets in. Big so fish, we have Dave. determined over the course of fishing that 32 inches behind the cowbells is a good positioning point for that spinner. So that's exactly what we're doing with this combination today. Here you can see those silver over laser green bells coming in, wind down and steer them to the right. And of course terminated with a number two 2X owner hook so that we've got a lot of good power on this fish. All right, let's wind right down to them one more time. Steady as she goes, Dave. Steady as she goes. Good over 30 lake trout here, easy. Stop winding, raise them up. Back up, back up, back up, and I got it. Well, there's that spin and glow combination here in the tip of this lake trout's mouth. You can see we're running a straight green, straight lime green with white wings, followed by, by what we refer to, and it's one of the all-time favorites in the safe fleet, the bumblebee, and then we're going a green, orange, green. Not knowing exactly what the bite was going to be like today, so instead of running two beads, we dropped it back to three. So that's if those fish get a little bit fickle and they're coming in underneath the bait, and they're not taking it as heavy as you like, it almost acts like a stinger hook. That'll get back in the lake trout's maw. They don't even know. They're approaching that bait, next thing you know, they're hooked. Todd, what do you think about that, buddy? That's an awesome experience. 32 inches behind the cowbells. I like it. There's a lot of learning here. There's a lot of experience. On, there's a lot of experience when you're fishing with the king. Uh, that's cool. Look at this big trout. That's a There he is. We're going to show you exactly how to tie this set up, everybody. Let's go to uh, the kitchen table where I've got all our Yakima baits out, laid out, a bunch of our hooks and uh, peripheral terminal gear from owner, and we'll show you exactly how to tie this combination up. Hi everybody, Captain Bill Safe the Third. Unbelievable giant lake trout action here in the video today. It's time to go into the Westview Lodge here into the kitchen. We're going to tie up some spinners. I'm going to show you some of this trout candy and I'm going to illustrate exactly what you need to do in order to put a spin and glow combination together for these big lake trout. These are typical boxes. Take a look here at what we carry on each of our charter boats. Here I've got peanuts, I've got spinners, I've got all kinds of different different beads that I've got in here. Now if you want to get a variety, variety of different colored beads and you're wondering where to go and how to get them, one of the easiest places to get plastic or glass beads is at a craft store. Pay a lot of money in a tackle shop, but if you go to the craft, uh, craft stores like Joanne Fabrics or Michaels, you can buy a thousand beads in a bag for five dollars. It's a cheap way to get it. Now here are all your Yakima baits, all your spinning glows I've got here in different colors and different sizes. And you can see in this box right here, I've already got them tied up in different combinations. Here's the one that was working so well in today's video, the green with the bumblebee behind it and the three bead going back to a number four owner hook. They're all set up and they're all tied so that we can reach in there and get exactly the color combination that we need to match with the set of cowbells that we're running. Let's sit down here and we'll take a look at exactly what we're using. I just finished tying this bait together and I'm using a two spinner system here. You can see the lead spinner is chartreuse and black. These two happen to have silver wings and it's followed by the silver redhead which is such a standby in the safe charter fleet. Behind it, green bead, orange bead, oversized green bead, on a number four owner hook. That's the proper size for this medium size to small spinner. 
if we wanted to tie a larger spinning glow like the one that I'm holding in my hand then we would jump up to a number two owner hook that's got a little bit larger hook, hook gap now this happens to be a 1x strength you can also do it in 3x strength there's the number two as well and that's the hook that we tie so many of our salmon rigs with as well so either one of these two are going to work are going to work very well but the number four which we've got right here is the better size hook for the medium to small size spinner so just match them accordingly we've got a green pirate here and a silver redhead here we've got a green pirate with a chartreuse green spinner those color combinations work great and i just picked one set of cowbells here's a set of hammerhead bells but you can see green silver glow either one of these combinations is going to be a good color coordinated combination to run behind this particular set of cowbells so try to match your spinners to the cowbell presentation that you're actually using now if we go back to the setup that i tied a great hook followed by a three bead system like you saw in the video what i like about the three bead system is that it puts the hook a considerable distance behind the spinner as that fish comes in even if he's biting light he's going to attack these he's coming right by the hook that's what places that hook down the second third gill raker and gives you a positive hook up on that fish coming back to the terminal end of that fluorocarbon tippet is a 1.5 hyper snap that's this snap right here. It's welded, it's not a cross lock. It's that 1.5 hyper snap, that's perfect. That's gonna hook right into the tail end of the cow, of your of your cowbell rig. When you put this in the water, you're gonna fix that here and it's gonna troll 32 inches. Now my suggestion is, we've been doing this for 100 years and standardization in the safe charter fleet is critical. I know that if I hold that hook point, and I come to the ball of my shoulder right here that that's exactly 32 inches. I've also got that marked out on the back of my boat. If you don't know where 32 inches is, put it down. That's the length of lead that we use. You can catch them at 24, you can catch them at 48, but we need to standardize boat to boat across the eight boat fleet so that when subtle changes occur in the bite or the fishery, you can't have one guy trolling a spinner at 32 inches, another guy trolling at 48, and another guy trolling at 15. Too many variables to contend with. So over 35 plus years of charter fishing, we found that that 32 inch lead behind the, behind the cowbells seems to be appropriate for catching big lake trout on a regular basis. Big over 20 pound lake trout coming in the boat right now. Let's go back to the action. See the spinners coming in. What Todd's doing is perfect. He's keeping that rod right at 10 o'clock. Just waiting for the fish to come, lilting it in. Dave, why don't you put Johnny at the wheel? Yep. Have him go straight down. Why don't you come back and net this fish for me, Dave? Todd, you came in uh, to visit to visit John. He's in yeah. Redfield, right in yeah. snow country here. Yeah. Me and Carla have been friends for 30 years or 40 years, haven't seen each other in almost 30. So we came in to visit. Thought, what better way than to get out, break the ice, fish with the king? Yeah, perfect. Yep. This is a that's a huge trout day. Wheel to the right, John. Huge, huge trout, Todd. I don't want to get you excited, oh, but that's a big fish. yeah, you got a you got a 20 on right here. Okay, Johnny. Keep them coming just like that. Dave, you want to slide in underneath me here? What Dave is doing is he's getting on the inside of Todd's fish. John, you see the black lever? Wheel to the right, John. I'm going to get up on the other side of this. Stay with me right here at the back of the bowline. Neutral, John. Black to the middle. Okay, wind down, wind down, Todd. Stay right here, wind down. Let's get on him, Dave. Get on. Okay, raise your rod tip, buddy. Back right up, back right up, back right up. Yes, sir. Black forward. Mammoth, mammoth, mammoth trout. You got a 20 pounder here, buddy. Oh <laughs> Look at that, and the spinner is it's off. What the spinner is off. <laughs> <laughs> That is serious business, Dave. Big fish. <laughs>
Hey, do me a favor. Will you whack him, Dave, and pose that fish with 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 uh, Todd Look for at me? The size of this lake trout. How can you beat it in the middle of a triple? And we ice a 20 out of the deal, Todd. Yeah, nice job, awesome. buddy. We knew that boy. was a big fish when he hit, too. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Dave, what's the deal here? You've been out here working the trout. I've been fishing walleyes. This is my first day coming. Yep. What's What's the deal? Tell everybody what we're doing here to stay on them. You know, we're staying right on bottom. Again, Bill talked about the northwest corner here, what we call. Um, again, just dragging the bottom with these cowbells, making sure our leads are right, and we're sticking to it. Yeah. We're boy. right on top of them. And, and fishing in that 150 foot, fishing 12 over. Correct. And you know what that means is if, if you lower that downrigger in 150 feet of water and you hit once on the retouch once you keep trolling away you're gonna find bottom in 162 correct so we're in 150 feet of water but we have 162 feet of cable out and that's why we call that fishing 12 oh, over 12 over now the reason that's important some days you might be at 2.0 on the throttle sometimes you might be at 0 0.8 on the throttle depending on what the currents doing down there but that's the proper speed for that spinner, uh, that cowbell and spinner combination. And he ate it. I mean, we ate it big. As soon as we made that turn, dropped the third bag in the water, Dave backed the throttle down, and we were right into a triple and a dandy, dandy 20. Everybody, that's the way it's working on the back deck of the Safe Charter Fleet here in 150 feet of water on the northwest corner. Good job, boys.